is on friendly advice. Don't get back up. What's up, everybody? I'm Kirk. Welcome back to the channel. Blood West is an open-ended horror FPS where you play as a desperate desperado trying to cure a blighted land. Blood West is coming to us from Hyper Strange, who on top of being a fairly prolific publisher, happens to be one of the developers of the upcoming Postal Brain Damage. Blood West recently snuck its way into early access, and despite an ever-growing stack of games I need to get through, I decided to give this Weird West indie a shot, and long story short, I think it's something worth talking about. <laughs> So reload your six shooter, grab some arrows, and take a shot. It's time to play cowboy. But before all that, if you're new here and you're digging what you're seeing, please consider liking and subscribing to help support this channel. Alrighty, let's saddle up. Oh, it worked. It worked. And he is even in one piece. In Blood West, you play as an undead gunslinger, who has been summoned back to life by mysterious forces that clearly need a throat lozenge. Bring us anything you may deem weird or disturbing. A foul curse has befallen the moonlit desert plains, causing the dead to rise and the locals to be transformed into hideous bloodthirsty beasts. Your mysterious overlords have charged you with lifting this curse. To do so, you must seek out three cursed items, hidden somewhere in the desert map. And how you go about doing this is mostly up to you. As you can probably tell, the game's visuals lean hard into the retro. Pixelated textures and low poly models inhabit this world and I would say it's convincingly old school. The environment looks appropriately western, although I wish the horror theme was more represented. With the exception of some skeletons and spider webs here and there, if you were to put this map in a non-horror western game, you wouldn't have to change much. If this is a cursed land, I'd like to see it represented more in the art direction. Gone. Enemies, however, look great. Their twisted designs are creative and striking. Sheriffs that have been turned into screeching bird-like creatures. Ladies of the saloon who have been horribly disformed and sport metal face masks. And my favorite, zombies that couldn't quite manage to break out of their coffins. There's a lot of character in these enemy designs, which in turn gives a lot of character to Blood West. <laughs> nope. The Steam page for Blood West describes it as an immersive horror FPS. Which is true, but between you and me, I think action RPG gets more to the point. Quests and side quests drive the game, all within a large, open-ended map. The game revolves around gaining experience to level up your character, and upon doing so, specific skills can be purchased. Skills, I'm happy to say, have a clear effect on gameplay. Inventory plays a major role, with the player always having to manage it and, of course, seek out better equipment by means of looting and or trade. Weapons are naturally your most important resource, but the player can also find and equip special items that give them stat buffs and perks. Immersive sims, of course, are a clear inspiration here, and indeed the player does have a degree of agency in how they want to approach quests. And I would say there are hints of Dark Souls here, too. <laughs> I live again. Within the map, there are a handful of safe places where the player can heal, buy and sell items, and store extra equipment. These places also serve as checkpoints the player will return to after they die, just like Dark Souls bonfires. However, unlike the Souls, resources, like money, are not lost upon death, and enemies do not fully respawn when you kick the bucket, although they do respawn over time. <laughs> Right. Let's stretch those dead legs. There is punishment to death, though. If killed, the player will incur a soul flaw, some type of hit to their stats, like lowering their health or stamina, or raising the chance for a status ailment. Not unlike Dark Souls' hollowing system. If killed again, the soul flaw will get worse, die a third time, and it will turn into a full curse. If the player hits this point, they do have an out. To lift the curse, they'll have to complete some task for the Raspy Totem, typically killing some type of enemy or killing an enemy in some type of way. Let's see, kill the pesky animated dead. A speed bump for sure, but I appreciate the solution being something within the main gameplay loop and not involving collecting, crafting, or some other abstract concept. 
acting as a yin to the yang of curses, the player can also pay the totems for blessings. Costing one gold coin, which are uncommon among the loot, the player can be blessed with a stat buff, like better stealth, more strength, or being able to spot valuables in the environment easier. You can only hold one blessing at a time, and they last until your next death. A simple but effective system that the player can strategize around. I wouldn't necessarily call Blood West's gunplay realistic, but this is not a shooter where you can jump around like a maniac slinging bullets with little care in the world. This is a game where you need to take your time and be mindful of your shooting, because there are consequences to how you play. Flipping combat will only serve to make you waste ammo and get yourself killed. Aggroed enemies are wiggly and erratic, which makes them hard to hit, and taking damage is likely to cause you to bleed out. Moving while shooting only serves to screw up your accuracy, and aiming down the sights is a must because hip shots are not reliable. Reloading is slow. These weapons must be reloaded one bullet at a time, and if the player isn't mindful of this, they can get themselves into some bad situations. <laughs> Yep, pretty much shit the bed on that one. If you need to kill an enemy, you best do it silently and from a distance. And if the odds are too great, nothing wrong with relying on a stick of dynamite. Once you get the hang of it, it can be pretty satisfying. Realistic enough to make you think, but still providing a thrill. Splat. Stealth and Stealth Killin' is where Blood West shines. Blood West's stealth system is easy to wrap your head around. When sneaking, there's a meter at the bottom of your screen that fills up depending on if the enemy sees you, hears you, or both. Sight fills it faster, sound fills it slower. And if it fills up all the way, you're caught. Stop moving and or get out of sight, it lowers. Simple, clear, and not a bad way to do it. Plus, any improvements to your stealth skills through leveling up or item equipment are easy to see with the meter raising slower. The funnest moments in this game for me was sneaking around, axing zombies in the back, and dropping the ghoulies with my bow and arrow. Oh, and you can retrieve your arrows too, which is awesome. Let's put these to good use. My only complaint is that enemy AI is a little inconsistent. Failing to kill an enemy or killing an enemy with an earshot of another will get the undead alerted and chasing you down. However, I find it odd that dynamite exploding isn't alerting these two zombies in earshot. Just death. Death of the earth. And you'll likely encounter other moments of doing something that should have alerted enemies and somehow didn't. Like I said before, in Blood West, player action has consequence, and at the moment, this aspect of the AI undermines it. That being said though, for the stealth gamer that loves taking out enemies one by one, like a panther, this game will get that dopamine flowing. Overall, I have to say I really enjoyed my time with this build of Blood West. This was kind of a surprise to me because I actually played a demo of this game last October during Steam Next Fest. And while I dug the concept, I can't say I love the demo. Frankly, it was too punishing. Too hard to get any sense of the game because death was swift and unforgiving. I'm sure the difficulty was adjusted for this build, however I think a lot of my enjoyment came from the fact that I was able to ease myself into the mechanics instead of being thrown off the deep end, like in the demo. Basically, once I found the groove, the game was nothing but groovy. The stealth, the exploration, the curse system, I found everything fun here. But before we wrap up, I do have some general observations of things that could be improved on in future builds. You know, nitpicks. In terms of graphics, I mentioned that the art direction for environments can be pushed more towards the horror side of things. But in terms of the technical, the graphical options for this game are bare bones. And while I don't think this game is gushing with post-processing effects for us to meticulously adjust, it would be nice to have basics like an FOV slider and V-Sync. V-Sync especially, screen tearing was a common issue throughout. And I'd be lying if I said there weren't performance drops. Lots of little stutters here and there, so it seems like there's still some optimizing to be had. 
Jank reared its ugly head, fortunately not to the degree that it hurt the experience. But sometimes enemies would clip through walls, and the AI did have a habit of getting stuck on the geometry or looping on a path. <laughs> For the game's HUD, the horizontal compass at the top is great, but it'd be nice if north, south, east, and west was actually represented, so I didn't have to keep consulting my map to reorient myself. Also, there's this black rectangle at the bottom of the screen that displays your options for interactions. Cool, but 90% of the time, this thing is empty and just taking up space on the screen. I feel like we could do something better here. The inventory screen works well, but it would be nice to be able to rotate items to make sorting a little easier. While exploring, you can find and collect documents that detail your enemies. Very cool. However, these documents take up valuable space in your inventory. You can discard, store, or sell them, which is nice, but wouldn't it make more sense to sort documents away in a documents tab within your journal as opposed to having them affect your inventory at all? I mean, unless there's some larger plan for the document pages, I feel like this should be considered. Last, while playing and going through footage, I noticed quite a few spelling and grammar errors, enough to bring up in this video. For example, I doubt our undead cowboy meant to say what I should do. Brought has a T at the end of it, buried only has one R, and I have a funny feeling that attacks from surprise is meant to be surprise attacks. Hyper Strange is a Polish developer, and I'm gonna take a wild guess and say English is a second language for a lot of that team, so I do cut them a little slack. However, for the next update, it might be wise to do a little proofreading. All in all, Blood West turned out to be a nice surprise. My first real surprise of 2022, I'd say. Despite some rough parts, this is a mostly ideal early access build. Ah, here's the real question though. Is it worth jumping in now? I'd say yes and no. If at any point you were watching this video and thought, hells yeah, I need to play this now, well then play it now. Especially if you're the type who will give the developer feedback on the Steam forums. You likely will not be disappointed. Otherwise, if you're digging this but are on the fence, well, first of all, I got about four hours of gameplay out of this build, which isn't bad, but I would say once things really start going, they end. And while there is some replayability here, it's hard to imagine a dedicated player spending more than a couple afternoons on this particular build. The developer has said they want to wrap this one up in the next six to eight months, and the end of the demo does reveal the next two areas to come, a swamp by the looks of it and a mountain range. Coming has one M, by the way. But sad to say, early access roadmaps often need to be taken with a grain of salt, and despite this strong first showing, it's hard to say how the rest of this game will pan out. Out. So right now I would say the safe bet is to wishlist and keep a close eye on this one, because this title has a shot at being something pretty damn cool. And you better believe I'll be covering future significant updates. So keep one of those eyes on this channel as well. But that's it for me. What did you think of Blood West? Is this one calling to you? And has anybody had a chance to play it? What are your thoughts and suggestions for it? Be sure to let me know in the comments. And if you liked the video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and ring the bell for notifications on future uploads. It's a couple clicks for you and a massive help for this channel. And don't be shy, come say hi in the Kirk Collects Discord linked below. I'm Kirk, and thank you for watching this video. Stay safe out there.